Hello and welcome to the University of Nottingham. Today we're going to be discussing the question, why study Ecclesiastes? And I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Doug Ingram, one of my colleagues who's published, written books on the book of Eccle Ecclesiastes. So I think really, Doug, we should start by asking, for the benefit of our viewers, what is Ecclesiastes? Well, and that's a really good question to start with, because one of the big challenges with Ecclesiastes is determining just what is this book? Most people will know a little bit about the book. So, for example, there's a key phrase, under the sun, which people use in everyday language without realising that actually the only place it appears in the whole of the Old Testament is in Ecclesiastes, where it appears repeatedly. So it's a key theme in the book. The, the poem on time, which has been made famous by the birds, uh, for everything, tun, 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 mm -hmm. there is a time, tun, tun, and so it goes on. I, I'm disappointed you're not singing it to us. But you uh, wouldn't be <laughs> if I tried. <laughs> uh, comes from Ecclesiastes, and the phrase vanity of vanity is always vanity. I would have some questions about the translation of that, but that comes from Ecclesiastes as well. Mm. So what, 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 is the, what is the underlying term for, for vanity? Well, the underlying term in Hebrew, of course, is hevel. And what it means is something like breath or vapour, and it's clearly being used in a metaphorical way in the book. The problem is how you pin down that metaphor. So many people will pin it down very negatively. So for example, I think the NRSV has futility, the NIV has meaningless, the Good News Bible has useless, but others translate it in a much more neutral kind of a way. So some people translate it as temporary or, or something along those lines. Some people give up on the whole job of trying to translate it and just, just use the literal word breath or use the Hebrew word hevel. But what I think it's conveying is something about the breath-like nature of life under the sun in the realm that we know. So Ecclesiastes, a key aspect of Ecclesiastes is that it effectively ignores the divine realm. So it does talk about God, but it's specifically looking at the realm that we know, life under the sun, and effectively saying, though it doesn't say this implicitly, we don't know too much about the divine realm. That's where God is. That's God's business, if you like. What we're dealing with is the realm that we know and all the problems associated with that. And I think one of the key messages of the book, which gets back to your question, what is Ecclesiastes, is that when you try to get a, a definitive handle on life, to have all the answers, if you like, to have it all nicely sewn up, it's like breath. If you try to grasp your breath, you know there's something there, but trying to grasp it, you end up with, with nothing in your hand. And I think that's some of what Ecclesiastes is, is, uh, is all about. Mm -hmm. But people respond to the book very differently, and I hope I'll have a chance to come back to that mm -hmm. uh, in a minute or two. Some people see it as very negative, so the translation meaninglessness in NIV, meaningless or meaninglessness, conveys a very particular impression, and some see it as a very depressing book a book that asks the question, what is the meaning of life? Mm. And effectively comes to the answer, there is none. Well, I, I don't think actually that's a good representation of the book. Mm. I think that one of the beauties of the book is that it explores life under the sun, the realm that we know, very realistically. So it's prepared to tackle the problems of life, the challenges of life head on. And it makes no bones about the fact that life can be very tough. Uh, that life can be way beyond our ability to fully understand and that life involves suffering. It takes all these things seriously, but I don't think it comes to a negative conclusion. What I think it does do, and this is a key aspect of what the book is all about, what I think it does do is involve the reader in these issues and, if you like, throw at the reader all sorts of different perspectives and then invite the reader to come to his or her own mm. conclusions. Mm. So I hope that gives you some idea of what I think Ecclesiastes is. It does, and that's helpful because, as you say, Ecclesiastes does have a reputation for being a negative mm. or rather depressing book. In that sense, I have to come back to Vanity of Vanities. Why did you choose to study Ecclesiastes? How did you go down that route of picking this book that in the popular culture or consciousness is so somehow negative? How did you come to study it for such a long time as well? Okay, well, one of the things I mentioned earlier was the diversity of interpretation of, or in, uh, diversity of understanding of the book, if you like. And I first encountered that in popular culture. 
I have asked people what they think of the book of Ecclesiastes. I've asked people individually, I've asked them in class, and I always get a very diverse response from those who basically just don't understand it, so give up on it, to those who find it very depressing, so often give up on it, to those who actually find it very depressing, but in that way reflective of their experience of life, who love it because it reflects mm. that experience of life, mm -hmm. through to those who find it a deeply engaging book and find themselves deeply engaged with it. But it's not just at the popular level. When I was doing studies at university, I looked more and more at the scholarly approach to the book of Ecclesiastes and discovered that as far back as we can go in terms of interpretative history, people have disagreed. Mm -hmm. So even back to the earliest Jewish writings we have about the book of Ecclesiastes, there's um, polar separation in the opinions. And the more I studied the book, along with these different views, the more I came to the conclusion, which I still hold and I still hold very strongly, that the book actually invites a diversity of interpretation and is open to very different interpretations that are solidly based in the text. I think one thing I would say, which uh, kind of has kept me hooked in, is that whatever interpretation you come up with, there's always something that doesn't quite fit. Mm. So I don't think anyone can ever really have the definitive understanding of Ecclesiastes because there's still something else you've got to get fitted in there. And one of the beauties of Ecclesiastes for me then, and that has continued to today, is that that's how I experience life. Mm. I may think at times, though, as I get older, less and less it has to be said, but I may think at times that I've got life nicely packaged, I know what I'm doing, I know what life is about. And then I find things that don't fit to that and it all goes up in the air and I have to start again. And Ecclesiastes fits very well with that, I think. Very good. Thank you very much, Doug. It's good to hear how this book from the Old Testament, which actually seems a world away from us, can still have an impact today and can still be something important for us to study today. Thank you very much. Thank you.